of Alt Heads. This is the self-proclaimed, sarcastically named Captain Keyforge, also known as PJ Broughton of the Steel City Snuffle Gators. And on this episode of Captain's Compod, we are going to talk about the release last week of Keyforge Adventures. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, how it works a little bit. Uh, in terms of the cards, some of the new keywords, things like that. Um, I'm also going to talk about how I felt about it after a couple of games, because I've played a couple of games with it. Um, So yeah, we'll be talking about that too. Um, So, it was Keyforge Adventure number one, there are going to be others, and and it was Rise of the Key Racken. Um, It's the first... As I say, we know that we're going to get another one in May. Um, also as well, a third one may have been teased on Twitter because on Twitter, FFG put up a Mars word search um, with Keyforge Adventures branding. So at some stage, there may be a Keyforge Adventure relating to House Mars as well. But this is the first of the three, Rise of the Key Racken, and we have the story so far, when the Society of Logic and Reason lost its undersea observatory, it turned to the Archons of the Crucible for help. Promised a cache of rare amber, a team of brave Archons has joined the crew of the greatest ship the Logo Society has ever created, the SLRS Vortexilo. And it's a good thing the Archons were brought on board too. The observatory is in ruins, destroyed by a monstrous beast. Only Dr. Escatera, a familiar name, who studied ancient crucible legends, has recognised the beast as the fabled Key Rakan. Sealed beneath the ocean long ago by an ancient, long forgotten civilization, the Key Rakan has been released by an evil Aquan cult, and its full might has yet to be witnessed. But even as the Vortexilon discovers the existence of the Kiraken and the fate of the observatory, the monster has abandoned its bed of destruction and has pointed its glowing eye, or eyes, upwards. Should the Kiraken reach the surface, it will submerge entire continents in its wake, bringing ruin to civilization as we know it. The beast must be defeated. Um, so... Essentially, this is um, a game that can be played in two ways. Um, Cooperatively with uh, two, three players. uh, Or, or, uh, yeah, with two or three players, but it can also be played solo as a one-player adventure. So you or two friends are going to take on the key racken uh, in an effort to, to prevent it from reaching the the surface and bringing the ruin that uh, that the story promises okay um so yeah that's uh, that's the story now who is the key racken well the key racken is a uh, creature of its own house house key racken it has power dependent on the number of players the key racken's power is equal to 30 times the number of players the key racken only deals three damage while fighting, uh, and the key racken gets plus two armor for each unforged key the active player has. If the key racken is destroyed, the players win the game. Okay, so winning and losing, players win this adventure by defeating the key racken. The team of players does this collaboratively by attacking the key racken with creatures and destroying its arms and tentacles. The key racken has a total power of 30 times the number of players in the game and it is destroyed when it has damage equal or greater than its power. However, the player's time is limited. During the game, the key racken acquires amber by reaping and by resolving card abilities. Each time the key racken takes a turn, it attempts to advance. Okay. Um, now, uh, spending its amber to ascend towards the ocean surface. Should the key racken advance four times, it reaches the surface and the players lose the game. Players do not win the game by forging keys, but Doing so lowers the key racken's defences and makes it easier to destroy because for every key you forge, the key racken loses two points of armour. Okay. Um, now, the way the board gets set up for the key racken, and the key racken always starts 
um, on the left flank and players come out to uh, play uh, the Kirakens creatures always come out on the right they always get added to the right flank okay so that is what they always do they always get added to the right flank when they are played um, there are multiple types of cards in the free to play Keyforge Adventures that you find online first of all there are a double sided tide card Okay, um, one of those sides reads low tide, the tide is low, the cost for the key racking to advance is 3 amber per player. Your team loses a total of 2 amber per player as a group if you do raise the tide. And then the high tide says the tide is high, the cost for the key racking to advance is 6 amber per player after the key racking advances lower the tide. Um, and it's not... Um, Two way as in dark tidings, it is a one, it's a card that you flip. Okay, the adventure deck, as they call it, for the key racken includes multiple types of things. It includes creatures like uh, Crushing Arm, which is a nine power creature with the keyword prey, which I'll go on to in a minute. And it says destroyed, deal three damage to the key racken, ignoring armor. Now, pretty much all the key racken's creatures have this destroyed, deal three damage to the key racken, ignoring armor. So it possibly would, would be doable to kill the key racken just by killing the arms. Um, it also has actions in the deck, such as an action like Beast of Dark Legend action. Play. The key racking gains one amber for each of your unforged keys. If the tide is high, the key racking archives one adventure card. Okay, some of those have amber pips, some of them don't. Um, I've even seen ones that have two in some cases. We also have artifacts like Ascending Jet is an example. Um, action, so obviously it comes down exhausted like your artifacts would do. Give the key Rackens creature with the lowest power three plus one power counters. If that creature has nine or more power, destroy Ascending Jet and lower the tide. And then finally, we also have upgrades in here like, say, Titanic Wall, for example, upgrade. The key Rackin gains Skirmish pray the most powerful creature and fight deal three damage to each neighbor of the creature the key racken fights at the end of the key racken's turn if you control no creatures destroy the upgrade titanic more okay uh, so reading adventure cards abilities on adventure cards are written such as the player drawing the card or using the creature reads and resolves the text against themselves Okay, any time a card ability refers to the key racken, it refers to the opponent represented by the adventure. When resolving effects on a player's card, that refers to that player's opponent. The key racken is that opponent and performs actions indicated by that player's card effect, and card ability that affects each player also affects the key racken. Okay, so essentially when you're using these cards, you read them as if they refer to you and you are the one enacting the card that, uh, that is mentioned on there. So that's how, how they work. Okay, so it, it, it will say you destroy a creature when you read one of the cards. Um, choose a creature to be destroyed and you will then go on to destroy that. Okay, on a player's cards, only creatures controlled by that player are considered friendly. Teammates' creatures are considered neither friendly creatures nor enemy creatures. So if you're playing with more than one player, um, my battle line is not friendly to your battle line. If you capture Amber via a charrette and I have a Senator Bracus in play, I cannot spend the Amber on your charrette forging a key using my senator brackus because they are not friendly creatures um uh, if if i've got a bulwark at the end of my battle line the assault two doesn't pass on to the creature at the end of your battle line that neighbors it okay all adventure cards in the in this adventure belong to house key racken so again that's another hint that in future there may be other adventures 
Okay, so now I'm going to come on to the prayer keyword, which is quite important in Keyforge Adventures and may end up making an appearance in Keyforge Dex later. We never know. So, prayer keyword. Some of Key Rackin's creatures feature the new prayer keyword. A creature that has this keyword fights when it is used if the active player controls a creature described by the keyword. If a creature has the prayer keyword but no eligible creature exists for it to fight against, the creature reaps instead of fighting. If multiple eligible creatures exist in the active player's battle line, that player chooses which of their creatures is fought. So when the key racken takes its turn, the key racken always reaps unless it's acquired an upgrade that has the word prey. Every key racken creature that doesn't have the prey keyword reaps. Every key racken creature that has the prey keyword attacks the creature that matches its prey keyword unless you have no creatures down, in which case it reaps. And when they attack, if you've got two power three creatures down, you get to choose which power three creature it attacks and destroys, which is quite useful. Because obviously if you've got a power three creature that does nothing compared to a power three witch of the eye, for instance, um, you want to go for the three creature that does nothing as opposed to the, uh, the witch of the eye. Uh, so that's kind of a brief overview. I mean, the rules are available for free on Fantasy Flight's websites, as are all the cards, because it's a print-and-play adventure. Um, so have I played it? Yes. Well, I've played it twice. I did record both of them, but I wasn't happy with one of the videos. So you will be seeing one. Um, you won't be seeing the, the first one. Um, I think I've been making one mistake when I've been playing because I've been forgetting that the key rack and only deals three damage when fighting. So I've been treating the key rack and it does thirty damage while fighting and just absolutely destroys any creature that fights into it, regardless of power. Um, but I I really enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a very good way to find find a way to play Keyforge with actual cards on an actual map with actual tokens at home when you can't go out and play um, in person with your friends obviously equally if any members of the family play you can have a cooperative game at home as well um, and I'm, I'm a real fan of it my only downside is I would have liked to have paid FFG for actual cards so I hope that if this does well future adventures get released in card packs um, like say the Genesis card pack for um, Secrets of the Crucible um, so I hope we see those in future because we can buy them uh, but I, I really enjoyed it um, I've beaten the key rack and both times but to be fair each time I never even forged a key because I didn't focus on reaping I didn't focus on building a pool of amber every time I got two amber and I found that the key rack and had low tide and could advance I instantly raised the tide um, and pretty much I was just fighting into the key rack and at every opportunity available um, I'll say this um, I was using a deck that probably had reasonably high powered creatures I may look to use a deck with lower powered creatures, less creatures and less creature control on another game to see how that one fares because I don't think that's going to fare particularly well but again let's give it a go also as well they, they've suggested that you can play easy mode uh, and, and a hard mode which are mentioned in the rules just by drawing less cards for the key rack and on its turn it normally draws two uh, or drawing more cards on the key rack and turn um, to make it harder to play so uh, I did I really enjoyed it um, I'd be keen to know what everyone else thought of it have you played it are you looking forward to it? Did you think it was good? Bad? So yes, what are everyone's thoughts? Um, I'll Feel free to um, send them in by email. Um, we're, we're happy to hear those. Um, obviously we've got the stuff on Twitter as well too. So yeah, as ever, um, we have comments on YouTube, Twitter, email. Love to hear whether you think it's good, whether you think it's bad, if you think there could be any improvements, anything you'd like to see enter the actual game of Keyforge. Um, and uh, yes, that is going to be the end for today. Thanks for watching, so feel free to like and subscribe. I love comments and criticism, so please feel free to leave those. I'll hope to see you next time, but until then, may the forge be with you.